Hello everyone. In this video, we will look at how to implement SGF scheduling algorithm using C++ programming language. Or basically, we will be using C++ programming language to implement SGF scheduling algorithm. And since C++ and C are very similar, right? Uh, so you can just, if you want the C programming code, you can just uh, remove like C in and C out statements and you should be uh, good with the C code because both are not much different. Because I have not used any advanced data structure that is, I mean, that is present in the C++ for this coding. I mean, I have not used any of those. Things. So let's now look at first what SGF scheduling algorithm is. So SGF stands for sort test job first, right? That means the process that has the least burst time will get the CPU first. And the process will get processed in, in I mean, in respect to their CPU burst time in ascending order. So we will look at how algorithm works. I have an example on the right hand side. So while uh, going through the algorithm, I will also show you how the algorithm actually works on the example. And also SGF, SGF is non-preemptive. That means uh, once, once the process gets hold of the CPU, either, I mean, it, it can only be removed when it terminates or when it undergoes IO. In other cases, it cannot be removed in any in, in, in other cases. And also non-preemptive version, uh, sorry, a preemptive version of SGF also exists. That is SRTF algorithm. We will look at a, we will look at SRTF algorithm code. I mean, how to implement that in next video. And if you want to understand more about SGF algorithm, you can watch my video below. And I have explained here what is SGF with, um, with an example. Now let's look at uh, implementing SGF algorithm in C++. So uh, what are the inputs here? So inputs here are done. So let me just show you the demo here first before going to the code. So you will understand what is the input and what is the output. So here I have all the code, but I will this time run, sorry, I'll compile SJF scheduling CPV. So this is the code for SJF. And once I compile, I will start giving it the input from what I had on the right hand side. So the number of process I had was four and arrival time of first process was one, bus time of first process was one. So second process it was 3 and 3, for third process it's 4 and 2 and last process it's 5 and 2, right? And once you press enter, you should get the output in this form. So you should, you will get the hash p is the, what is the process id. So basically for each process I am giving an id. For this process 1 the id will be 1, process 2 the id will be 2, process 3 id will be 3, right? Then you have the arrival time and burst time that is from the input and in the output I am showing you the start time of each process that is st. Completion time of each process that is CT, turnaround time of each process that is TAT, waiting time of each process that is, that is WT, and response time of each process that is RT. And at last, we also have average turnaround time, average waiting time, average response time, CPU utilization, and throughput for this whole scheduling. Now, let's go back and look at the algorithm. So, this is a basic algorithm. This is not the, uh, this is just like a pseudo code. So what I am doing is, see, I am I, I have two variables here, completed and current time. So completed is the number of process that has completed execution. And current time is the, so you remember we draw Gantt chart, right, for solving these problems. And in the Gantt chart, we also track the time. So that's what is the current time here. So you will understand what is current time once you start going over the algorithm. So my while loop is while completed not equal to n. I will run this loop till I mean the number of process completed is not equal to n right it will only so this while loop will only break when all the processes are completed now the first thing is to find process with the minimum burst time among process that are in the ready queue at current time I think you got the point right so you have to find all the process right so let let me run through this so basically if you see in this example so initially completed will be equal to zero right completed will be equal to zero and what is the current time initially current time will be zero will be equal to zero we are zero time now at first at zero time we try to find out if there are any processes that are in a ready queue but if you see there are no processes in the ready queue at zero time because the first process itself arrives at arrival time one i mean the minimum arrival time is here is one so you do not have any process in the ready queue at uh, time zero right so if you see so basically for us pro there there won't be any process found so if you see the next step 
next step is if process is found you have to do these things but if process is not found you just have to increment the current time because we didn't find any process at this time and we still have some we still have processes right because complete are not equal to n till now then we have to increment the counter by one so basically our current time now will become one Right now again we will go into the while loop here and we will see that complete not equal to n because n is 4 complete is still equal to 0. Then again we will find process with the minimum burst time among process that are in the ready queue. Now at time 1 we have one process in the ready queue that is a, this is the process 1 right. So it arrives at 1. So basically now for this time we have some process found. So we will go into this if statement because if process found that means we have to execute this code is we have to increment the current time so we so basically since we have a process in the ready queue and we since we have only one process right and that is um, because see we do not have to compare the bus time because we have we have only one process but we if we had multiple process then we have to compare their bus time also that we will see later we will get some uh, cases where we will have multiple process in the ready queue now what we will do is basically we will draw the gantt chart here so basically from 0 to 1 this was empty, uh, idle right now at time 1 this process p1 will get executed and if you see start time i have marked as the current time right because start time will be the what is the current time current time is 1 so start time should be 1 that's what is the start time that is 1 now what is the completion time completion time is very easy right since it is starting at 1 and its burst time is also 1 that means it will complete at 2 that means completion time is 2 now what is turnaround time, waiting time and response time? So I have already uh, derived formulas for this, for turnaround time, waiting time and response time. And if you want to uh, watch how I have derived, I think I should have a video below. Yeah, this is the video actually, where I have derived all the formulas here. So you can watch this video on how I have derived this turnaround time, waiting time and response time. So basically TAT, if you see, uh, okay, let me remove this from here. And let's keep it here, completed. 0 and current time is 1 here right so bt then we will calculate a start time then we will have completion time tat waiting time and response time so start time we got for this as uh okay anyway first we'll draw the gantt chart and then fill up the values there that will be easier right because you see there's formulas for turnaround time turnaround turnaround time is simply completion time minus arrival time Waiting time is turnaround time and it's burst time. Response time is start time and survival time. So we'll calculate this. After this, what we will do is, since this is a uh, non-preemptive uh, scheduling, right? So since we have completed the burst time, we have to mark this process as completed. So completed count will become from 0 to 1. Right? And that was I have done. So basically I will mark this as, so I am keeping a mark variable also because when I'm trying to find the, uh, this burst time, right? So I, so when I'm trying to find process with the minimum burst time, right? In this, I should not consider the processes that are already completed, right? Why should, should not consider, right? Because they have already completed. completed. So that's why I marked process as completed. I will use the array to mark that as completed. And then I increment the counter as completed plus plus. That means we have completed equal to one now. And what is the current time? Now current time we have moved to two, right? Because now in the Gantt chart, we are at our time two. So current time will be equal to two. And basically this has completed. Now we will we'll not go into the else this time because we have a process this time found. Now again we will go to while loop again while complete not equal to n. Now we will find the process with the minimum burst time again right which are in the ready queue. Now at time 2 uh, are there so this process already completed so this will be removed from the ready queue. Now do we have any process at time 2? We do not have because the next process that ar uh, arrives is at time 3. So that means again so you, you got it what will happen right so this for this process will not be found again it will go to else statement and current time plus plus plus, plus will happen so two two three will happen and this will be again idle time and time will now basically okay let let us okay this time will be now three now at time three again this will go a while computer not equal to n find process with a minimum burst time at time three by time three again you have only one process this process so basically this will be found right because you do not have any other process and this will be given the process found so you will go in the if statement and the start time for this will be 3 and completed time will be 3 plus 3 equal to 6 and this will be p2 
right and again you will uh, complete all the other variables time around time the response time for this and then you will mark process as completed and completed plus plus will increment now to 2 this will become 2 and current time now in the Gantt chart if you see we are at time 6 so let's keep it 6 now uh, again it will not go to the else again it will go to the while completed is still not equal to n because 2 not equal to 4 again you have to find processes with the minimum burst time among see at time 6 how many processes you have so at time 6 this 2 has already completed this this is not, this will not be in the ready queue but both of these will be in the ready queue now right for uh, this process 3 and 4 because before time 6 they are arriving right at 4 and 5 that means you have to compare now the burst time of both because uh, two processes are there but if you see their burst time both are equal so if you remember in SJF when the burst time of two processes are equal then you have to uh, check the arrival time whichever, whichever arrived first that will get CPU first that's what we do when we have I mean process of multiple sorry when we have burst time equal for multiple processes then we look at the arrival time so in these two cases if you see both the burst time are equal but this uh, in, in 3 and 4 3 is arriving first right because the arrival time is 4 here that means which will get preference here 3 will get preference here that, that's, that means the process found will be 3 this time and you can write P3 here and it will go from 6 to 8 because I and mean, completion time will be 8 start time will be 6 that's what you will mark and you calculate the other parameter turn around time and response time and it should be done and then you will mark this also as completed and you will change both this from this will be 3 this will become 8 at time 8 we have now we have only one process that is this one 4 so basically we give the time to this so basically it will try finding the process with the minimum burst time but since there are only one process it will find this process p4 and it will run from 8 to 10 right 5 yeah 8 to 10 and at last computer will become 4 and this will become 10 but now in the while when you compare 4 not equal to sorry completed not equal to n but this time both are equal right that means it will break the while loop and you are done with this if you want to calculate you can calculate the, all the numbers so start time for 1 will be you can mark this as start time will be 1 for this for p2 is 3 for p3 it's 6 for this it's 8 completion time I'm, draw, I'm drawing it from the Gantt chart for ct uh, it's 2 this is 6, this is 8, this is 10. Now TAT is CT minus AT, this is 1, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5. Now waiting time is uh, TAT minus burst time, this is 0, this is 0. Now this is 2, this is 3. This will be so, Let me just uh, match my output to this program. So 2, 6, 8, 10, 1, 3, 4, 5, 0, 2, 3, 0, 2, 3, that's right. And CPU utilization, if you see, will be total time is 10. In that, how many time? It, ten, it was idle for. So it will be 10 minus 2 for 2 units of time. So this is the, basically our uh, CPU utilization. And throughput is total number of processes is 4. And if you see the schedule length, this is the schedule length that is. 10 minus 1 that is 9 so this should be your uh, schedule length so I think we are done with this example and hope you would have understood the algorithm and since you have understood the algorithm now you can easily go to the code here at the bottom and you, I think you will uh, understand it better now if you see here I have a process so every process is represented in the form of a structure it has PID, arrival time, burst time, start time, everything all the attributes that we have for process and then this is just the uh, so if you see I have taken a, uh, if you see here int is completed, I have taken a array, boolean array almost like 0 or 1 to mark whether a process has completed or not. And then this is the input into the arrival time, into the burst time. And then uh, I am mentioning, I mean having two variables, current time, complete time. And previous is also there, so this previous variable is just used to track the idle time. Because I am calculating the sequelization, right? That's that, For that I am uh, trying to maintain a variable pre previous to uh, know me the I mean to get me the idle time now if you see this uh, algorithm while loop complete not equal to and same thing right and the first so you see the code from here 
to here i mean int idx equal to minus 1 to this for loop whatever that this is from till here is just calculating the from all the processes that ready queue which is having the least burst time that's what it is doing so if you see it is iterating over all the processes then it is comparing which processes arrival time is lesser than current time so that means which processes are in the ready queue or which process have arrived in the ready queue and also you have to check has the process completed or not right both you have to check because because many processes many process right because i am iterating from 0 to n so many process will uh, satisfy this criteria but will not satisfy is complete criteria because they would have already completed now we are comparing if pi burst time less than minimum so basically i am trying to find out the uh, process with the minimum burst time so that's what i am doing i am trying to keep the index for that but in in the case when the burst time is equal to minimum right because what, if what happens if two the if two processes have same burst time i told you right give priority to the arrival time so whichever has minimum arrival time that will get the cpu first that's what i have done here then idx not equal to minus one that means it went into this loop right if statement and idx was changed to something that means the process was found so in that case i am changing everything right if you see here sorry let me go up so i am changing the start time comes the time turnaround time, response time i am also calculating the total turnaround time total waiting time, total response everything right and then i am marking this process as completed I am doing completed plus plus. I am updating the current time and previous. And otherwise, if the process was not found, I will just increment the current time plus plus. And at last, I am just doing some basic calculations to find out everything: average turnaround time, average waiting time. So basically, these are basically you have to divide total number of, I mean, total turnaround time with n, right? That will give you the average turnaround time. Similarly, average waiting, time, average response time. And then you have serialization and throughput. I covered this as uh, extra that you should understand, okay? For algorithm, what is the serialization and throughput? And if this is not necessary for you, you can remove this. And at last, I am printing the output. So that's what the code is. And if you go at the bottom, you should find the code in the GitHub. So this is the rep repository for that, all the code that I have for scheduling. And I hope you would have understood the scheduling algorithm. Uh, so see, here I was taking, I am trying to explain you with the incrementing the time counter by one every time, right? But you don't need to do that every time, right? Because from i mean for from this example right initially you know that right at one the first process is arriving right so maybe you can use some array and store this arrival time and traverse based on this but i thought that that will become a little bit complex so i just used time counter i, I was incre incrementing it by one i mean plus one every time and in the other algorithms also you will see how this approach makes the code very i mean simple so that's all for this video thank you